Sri Lanka has many nicknames. Teardrop of India, Island of Dharma, Pearl of the Orient. Names which reflect the beauty and richness of this island. But tensions between the ethnic Sinhalese and Tamil erupted into war in 1983. Tens of thousands have died in the conflict that continues to fester. Hundreds of thousands have fled the violence. Two teachers, Rajan Hul and Kopalasingam Sritharan, are co-founders of the University Teachers for Human Rights. Based in the northern city of Jaffna, they for years and at great personal risk have monitored and documented through regular reports the human rights abuses committed by the Sri Lankan government as well as the Tamil Tigers. For their human rights efforts, they have now been awarded the Martin Ennels Award. We hope this award draws attention to what we have been saying right along, that there can't be compromise on human rights. And for another, many people have been helping us taking lots of risks and yet wondering whether uh, it has all been worthwhile. We were not expecting nomination or the award as such, but when we looked at the sacrifices made by our, our colleagues, students and so many other people, and those who never been in touch with UTHR, but in their own way struggled against totalitarian ideology, their memory should be kept alive for the community to survive. This reward is also a, rec a recognition of their work and the risks they have taken. So it shouldn't be considered an award for us, but an award for all those who have been supporting us morally, uh, politically, and uh, helping us to find safety and also collecting information for our reports. We feel this, if it can be utilized to fight against this type of ideological hegemony and can contribute to a peace, then it's meaningful. These teachers are often alone in exposing the human rights abuses of all parties. Both are under the threat of death from the Tamil Tigers. Since one of their colleagues was assassinated, they have been forced to work underground for more than a decade, eventually ending up in India. From here, they continue to produce fact reports on human rights violations in Sri Lanka. People are very scared, but still we managed to get some information because of a long-term experience of the area. Human rights uh, violations are done by all quarters in the conflict. State, non-state forces such as LTT, and it's not only human rights documentation, but also questioning the politics, the environment they have created, the totalitarian environment and so on. So they couldn't tolerate us. Uh, they feel they are threatened and they normally try to stop those voices. And uh, they will try to kill people all in terms agents of foreign countries, getting funds from other countries and so on. The UTHR is now underground, but continues to gather information on human rights abuses. A dangerous task, no matter whether you are working from Sri Lanka or from India. For a long time, they haven't uh, attacked us openly, but we know that they don't like what we are doing and uh, we are a voice who have been constantly critical and uh, that itself places you in a situation where you need to be very watchful. We don't think too much about our situations that is ne necessary to keep our sanity. We try to keep the reality in the background. We take some routine precautions, but we don't think uh, beyond that. And if we had ever thought beyond that, we could have never done what we did. 
one day we feel very pessimistic feel frustrated question ourselves what we are doing are we doing is what we are doing is right i look at not only on a personal level but on a political level some people criticize us and tell us oh what we are doing sometime may be used by the state and some 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 people will say ltt will use the a human rights is not a tactical weapon as a law it is about human dignity and when we felt that the hamil struggle is destroying our community sending large number of youths on a suicidal path and eventually sending the whole community in a suicidal path we can't take tactical position we have to take a principled position i never intended to be anything other than a person teaching mathematics in a university but through my growing years the society i was in made me feel that uh, our rights were being trampled and uh, that's how we ended up starting the university teachers for human rights and it was uh, at that time an organization that also included academics from all over the country including singalese academics we have always been telling the international community look the sri lankan state is doing some very nasty things but uh, don't look at that alone when you deal with this you also have to deal with the reality of a force like the ltt you can't just regard it as a liberation movement and ignore what is behind it what was unique about us was that we moved away from concentrating just on violations by the state uh, into violations by our own armed group as well when you go to the ordinary people's level there is no hatred between these two communities tamils and singhali live together they marry each other there's no hatred as such tamils do not have trust on the sri lankan political establishment but tamils do trust ordinary singhali and singhali is at this moment unfortunately don't trust tamil political establishment it represented by the ltt because of their violence their massacres and so on we tomorrow peace comes and 3 4 years people will ch- live together without much hatred and also the thing and trust each trust will come up immediately so that is not the problem it's a problem on a political level the people of both communities want peace very badly but then you have the two sides the political establishment among the singalese and also the ltt just uh, keeping this problem boiling over and uh, was going on repeatedly thousands of soldiers being killed in the south thousands of uh, tamils being killed people evicted from their homes uh, without any end in sight both sinhalese and tamils originally come from india the sinhalese make up the majority of the population in sri lanka and their religion is predominantly buddhism the tamils are predominantly hindus albeit that many reports speak of ethnic and religious conflict fact reports show that the conflict is essentially a political conflict based on ethnic and religious sentiments we always have to learn from people and we have come across very ordinary people who are far superior to most intellectuals in being able to see this from a purely human point of view without taking ethnic differences into account and many of them are able to sympathize with their tamil neighbor or a singalese neighbor who has lost his children in a war or who has lost near ones in a massacre by the ltt that is the tragedy of today's ethnic conflict in sri lanka it is tiger ideology or tamil nationalist ideology which we call very narrow nationalist ideology and we if we want to resolve this conflict we have to come out of it every day ordinary tamil civilian father or son may be killed 
Similarly, ordinary single person will be massacred. If there are visionary leaders, they could have handled this situation differently. In Sri Lanka, a small island, there was a lot of potential for the country to come out of it and without going into the ethnic politics and contract itself. The war that's going on in Sri Lanka depends a lot on the role of the international community and also international organizations and agencies. The Martin Ennals Award is a prestigious award and uh, it helps to uh, focus attention on the conflict in Sri Lanka and uh, what we have been saying about the conflict. Sri Lanka can't go on like this and they have to face up to the truth and the pressure is coming out from various quarters internationally, regionally and locally so there is potential, there are people working for it sometimes one step forward, two steps backward you can see the possible potential and uh, big politicians and the people who are concerned of Sri Lanka should work towards that <laughs>